With Christmas coming up, you or your family members might be considering getting a supercar experience day. I've done a whole load of them at tracks across the country, and I think that there are some things that you should really know. While I do apologise for the sensationalist title, YouTube is a fickle beast, uh, and while I'm sure many have enjoyed their supercar blasts, it's not quite what it seems so let me explain. One of the main money makers for the companies that actually run the experience days is the insurance waiver fee. They claim that the insurance excess, if you were to damage the cars in any way, is something like £5,000. And of course, they also claim that since these are supercars, any amount of damage, even curbing a wheel, will cost you that much. And importantly, you are the one that's on the hook for that. They say if you so much as scratch the rims, they'll be billing you for everything that they can. So they offer you a solution. Pay them an extra 30, 40, 50 pounds, and they'll waive that excess. You can ram the thing into a hedge and you won't be liable for anything. The biggest problem with this, beyond the idea that anyone except the operator should be paying for the insurance, is that the instructors in the car will never let you do anything stupid enough to damage the cars in the first place. And more on that later. Another moneymaker is the in-car video and exterior photos. A single shot can be another 20 or 30 pounds at some events, and the in-car video isn't any better. Well, it has been a little while since I've done an experience day, especially thanks to COVID. Well, uh, the last time that I did one, the onboard video quality was uh, just absolutely potato quality. I mean, you would think that with all the money that they're raking in from it, they could probably afford to stick a few GoPros in there by now. When you arrive, you'll quickly find out that the majority of the cars that you'd really want to drive are what the operator calls premium cars. That means you'll have to upgrade your voucher to drive them. Want to drive an Aventador? Pay up. Ferrari 458? Well, when I did it, that was a premium car. Again, this can be as much as £50 extra, although I think I once saw 75 for one set of class of cars. I think it might have been a McLaren, actually. Of course, you don't have to pay the money, but as I'll explain in a second, there are a number of reasons why you might want to, beyond just wanting to drive the fancy nice cars. You can walk away having spent more than the voucher cost in optional extras pretty easily. Especially for a younger person who's receiving this as a gift, it can be a little onerous. Don't get me wrong, it is a great experience, but it is worth considering the added costs or finding a voucher that makes it clear they won't need to pay any extra, like the Silverstone Supercar Experience, for example. When it comes to the cars, assuming you don't pay for the, the premium cars, the options you'll have will likely be more like sports cars than supercars, and importantly here, run absolutely ragged. I went to do a four car experience day, and uh, when I asked to drive an Aston Martin DBS, I was told it was, let's say, worse for wear, and that I should pick something else. The only other option I had at the time was a Porsche 911 Turbo S from about 2003. The driver's seat was worn through the leather, the car had a good few rattles even just creeping out of the, the pit area, and it felt like it was on its last legs. The very first track day I did was an under-17s day driving a Ferrari 360. It looked and drove like it might conk out on us at any moment. It felt like it was missing about half its horses, and like it had four bushings that were completely shot, and I was also sitting on mostly foam as the seat was just ripped and worn. Again, don't get me wrong, it was still a good time, but it is worth noting that these cars aren't exactly looked after. Unless you expressly buy a voucher for somewhere like Silverstone, you might find that the more generic, like, virgin experiences type voucher is only available at a pretty small selection of pretty small and simple tracks. That young driver's Ferrari experience 
was, as far as I can tell, a farmer's concrete pad. The track was an oval with a cone chicane on uh, one of the strays, and I did one on an old airfield where you wouldn't really call any of the corner or the turns corners. The closest to a track that I actually got was at Mallory Park, which, while well, not too bad, isn't exactly long nor the most exciting or challenging. And that brings us nicely onto the time in the cars. You'll normally get somewhere between three and four laps in each car. I mean, that sounds fine, except that includes the outlap, the one where you leave the pits, and the in-lap, the one where you come back in again. So you only get one or two flying laps, then it's back into the pits. That's enough time to say that you've technically driven the cars, but far from enough time to learn them at all, or push them even slightly, assuming that you're even at a track that would, you know, allow for that sort of, you know, pushing the car in, in any sort of degree other than just, you know, gently breathing on the throttle and sort of turning in on a half corner. One of the most frustrating things to me was the fear-mongering. From the second that I arrived, I'm almost always told some version of, you won't be able to handle these cars, you will crash them, you will spin. Of course, in an attempt to sell you the insurance waiver fee that they present as mandatory. They often emphasize that if you do anything that your um, instructors don't like, you will be removed from the venue and won't get to complete your experience, no matter how many cars you've driven up to that point and how many cars your voucher says you should be able to drive. I had one place say that if you spin, you won't drive any other cars. And that brings us nicely onto possibly the worst aspect, the instructors. Now, I should clarify that I'm very much what you would call on the spectrum, uh, so I respond rather differently to uh, things than others, especially interpersonal and social situations, but the vast majority of the instructors essentially just bark orders at you for every second that you're in the car. They never let you actually experience driving because you spend most of your time just processing what order they're shouting at you and then acting on it. What's worse is if they decide to literally shout and swear at you for what they consider bad technique. I had one uh, instructor tell me that I'm an idiot and in much more colourful language for adjusting the steering wheel mid-turn basically at all. Let's change gears a little and talk about the best supercar experience day I've had. That was at Thruxton, just outside Andover. I've actually done both a supercar day there and their skid pan experience, and both were excellent. On the supercar day, I drove a Porsche Cayman as a, a warm-up car, then a McLaren 570S, and then a, admittedly limited, Formula Renault. In the McLaren, the instructor calmly talked me through it, but otherwise left me to enjoy the experience. He would let me make little mistakes, you know, going around corners, and then he would give me a tip for how to improve it on the next lap. Not just screaming at me to, you know, that I'm doing it wrong the entire time, the entire lap, which meant that I actually got to experience driving the McLaren and push it to its limits and more likely push it to mine. What's even better is that when I jumped into the single-seater Formula Renault and went out on my own, well, that meant that I had no minder, I had no, you know, no one screaming in my ear about what to do, I just went for it. And guess what? I overtook almost everyone, even with R the RPM limited to just 4,000, meaning that I was missing most of the speed and horsepower of the little 2-litre turbo engine. Don't get me wrong. Regardless of all of these points, having driven actually well over 10 different supercars is amazing. It's a fantastic experience on the whole, but it does have some blemishes that I think you should know about because they can detract from your enjoyment of the day. If you pick the right experience, the M4 day at MSV tracks, any of the ones at Thruxton or something like the Palmer Sport day that I'm looking to do next year, you or your giftee should have an incredible time. If not, 
well, be aware of these caveats to an otherwise great day and perhaps plan ahead. If you are gifting the voucher, maybe give the touch a bit of money alongside for the insurance waiver fee and that sort of thing. And, uh, yeah, just be aware of what's potentially going to come. With that said, this video is mostly from my experience of doing literally countless different supercar experience days and sort of track day events. Um, and so if you have any of your own thoughts and experiences, I would love to hear those in the comments down below. If you want to see more videos, probably not quite like this one, but more car related content, more how to's, car reviews, and a load of other stuff, do hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon and turn, uh, check out the uh, videos on the end card. So you can also support the channel with some of the Amazon links in the description if you're buying stuff there or picking up a hoodie or t shirt like this one. Otherwise, that's kind of it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.